I have felt most relaxed, most at peace, and most also stimulated and I guess happiest when I've been out in the natural world. And I regain that feeling when I get out into the Critical Zone Observatory sites. Here in Tucson, we live at the foot of the Catalina Mountains. And as you drive up, you go through a variety of ecosystems. You go from the Sonoran Desert ecosystem down at the foot of the mountains, through savanna woodland. You keep going a bit higher and you start to see ponderosa pine trees. And you go even further and you get into what's called mixed conifer forest. The Critical Zone Observatory was designed to take advantage of this gradient. It's chilly. Yeah. What is Critical Zone Science? Critical Zone Science requires understanding the physical, the chemical, and the biological factors that influence life on Earth. So you need to know all of it. It encompasses everything from where groundwater interfaces with the bedrock, all the way up to where you have atmosphere exchange occurring at the tops of tree canopies. We actually live on and take advantage of a very thin layer of the Earth's surface. And it's termed critical because arguably all of life on the planet depends on the presence and functioning of that portion of the Earth's land surface. The critical zone, in a variety of ways, spans across an enormous multitude of scales, uh, temporally and spatially. We can think about an entire hill slope or even an entire basin, all the way down to a tiny nanoparticle. And part of my work is aiming at looking at the smallest constituents of the critical zone and contextualizing them within larger scale processes. So when the Critical Zone Observatory program was first developed, the National Science Foundation conceived it as a network of sites where all of the sites would have specific science questions they were trying to answer. And we were selected here in Arizona in part to represent the hotter and drier end of the climate regime. What we want to do is to understand what are the feedbacks between the microbiology and the hydrology and geochemistry and how do they couple with each other and interact. And you can only do that by bringing the data sets together as a team and looking at the cross relationships between them. The different bacterial and fungal communities that exist up at the surface are actually gonna be fundamentally different both in terms of who they are and the type of work that they do as we go deeper down into the soils. So we often think about, you know, how are soils formed? It's through the physical and the chemical, but also the biological weathering of rock. And so one of the current uh, research questions that we're really excited about and really interested in trying to answer is, how does the interplay between what's happening at the surface and then what's happening in the subsurface? How does the interplay between those processes create the evolution of soils and influence the distribution of the microbes that are living in and along this entire soil profile? Using this vacuum pump, I'm able to extract water from the soil into this collection bottle, which we can then bring back to the lab and analyze. Soil is fascinating because it's where the non-living meets the living. And here in the Santa Catalina Mountains and our Critical Zone Observatory, we're able to look and see how these soils differ from one another and how we can relate those to environmental variables like climate and like the parent material, the geology of the place. The geologic underpinnings of the critical zone took hundreds of millions of years to develop and are forming into what we currently observe today. And at the same time, a lot of the chemical reactions that take place in soils can happen you know, in under 15 minutes.
We also have folks like Craig Rasmussen who have been looking at how this process of water movement through this catchment is transforming rock into soil. We're trying to understand the, the long-term evolution of this whole landscape. So behind me, there's a, a great example of one of the natural processes here in the, that moves and redistributes mass and material across the, the landscape. We have trees, as they fall, you can see it brings up a big root ball with it, which brings a lot of soil. That soil can then move by gravity down slope. What I enjoy is going back to the same landscape repeatedly. You see the landscape as a, as a whole and how it all fits together and you're like, oh, I can see how this whole process works. Soils are kind of a, it's the story and it's not always easy to understand the story. So you have to decipher it and uh, translate that from what you measure to what's going on in the environment. I think that the critical zone and studies of the critical zone are essential for being able to not just predict the future of the Earth's surface and the world that we live in as humans on the, on the planet into the future, but also to be able to develop solutions to many of the problems that we've created for ourselves. The real value that I find in critical zone science and having this perspective and why it's so exciting is because we are facing so many different types of environmental challenges or even environmental crises. We are experiencing rapid climate change. We are experiencing more frequent droughts and hotter temperatures here in the Southwest. And if we don't have a holistic understanding of a system, then we are not gonna be able to make meaningful and informed decisions about how we might manage that system. We have to remind ourselves that, as humans, we are part of the ecology of this biosphere. We are part of the organisms that are interacting with the other organisms in this system. And so we have an inherent role there as well. My hope is that through learning about how humans have an impact on critical zone processes, we can move our interventions and our approaches to critical zone management to a place that will sustain the health of the ecosystems that will allow us to be nourished by those ecosystems and be sustained by those ecosystems long into the future.